Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I'm going to go back to a previous topic that we went over before when we talked about vulnerability assessment solutions. And I went over different vulnerability assessment solutions and one of them was Nessus. And as you can see here, I am running Nessus Community Edition, which allows me to scan, I believe, up to 16 IP addresses. It had some limitations, but it's enough for the demo and to do some basic scanning on your internal network if you want. So, um, and we also created some videos for OpenVAS. But something that I want to go deeper into right now is the difference between running a authenticated scan and an authenticated scan. And why would you do that? Now, what we're going to be talking about, it is true to any vulnerability assessment solution. Uh, you know, if we're using any other product, it's going to be the same concept. So when you create a scan, and, I'm, and again, I'm using Nessus Community Edition here, uh, you're going to have the option of selecting some predefined templates depending on what you're looking for. For most of your basic or normal scans, if I, if, if I want to use that word, you can click on basic. And when you do that, you're going to type, you know, the required fields for the scan, you know, my basic or whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to type the IP address of the um, host that you would like to scan. But if you pay attention to this tab right here, you're going to see an option that says credentials. And when you click on that, uh, you're going to have the option of entering the credentials that you want to use to run the scan. So by default, you run just unauthenticated, which is going to be doing a scan of how anybody or a you know, or an, a potential attacker will see your host, which is unauthenticated unless they have access to your system. And the results are going to be slightly different. Now, if you're going to be scanning on a Windows computer, you would click on Windows, of course. And then if most or not if, but most likely you're going to be using the password for that, then you would select password. But if you want to use the hash, go for that. So you would type the uh, username for the admin, uh, not the administrator, for the user account you want to use to scan the host if you're using authenticated scan, right? So you would do that. And you would type, of course, the uh, credentials for that. If, if you have that in a domain, you will type the uh, domain information as well. Something that you have to keep in mind is that when you're running a authenticated scan, the system is going to, or that process is going to log in to that remote host and it's going to collect information and it's going to run the scans based on the on the plugins uh, configured. If you're using the defaults, you don't have to worry about anything, but if you are configuring plugins, then it's going to be running the scans with those unique plugins. So when it happens, it may be that the antivirus solution on the remote host or the firewall or the user account control is going to stop or it could potentially stop the scan from running successfully. So you have to do some planning and make sure that the account you're going to use and the type of scan you're going to use is going to be able to run successfully on the remote host. So that is how you would do that. Now, when you are scanning Mac computers and Linux computers, of course, you're not going to be clicking on Windows and entering the Windows credentials. You're going to click on SSH, and then you would type in the SSH uh, credentials uh, for the user that you want to use to run the scan. So let me come back here for one second to my scan folder. And you're going to see that I ran two 
different scans before on two of my test holes here in my lab. And the difference is not that big, but there is a difference. Of course, I'm running this in a test environment. So my configuration is very simple, very standard. But if you're going to be running this in a production environment, I'm sure that the differences are going to be more noticeable. So let me show you this right here. Let me start by clicking on the unauthenticated scan. And this is the same host, 172.16.5160, which happens to be a Windows 10 computer. And as you could see, it detected uh, 48 items in, informational, uh, in the informational section and six items with medium um, uh, category for vulnerabilities, right? And as you could see, you know, it's going to show them right here. It's going to tell you what they are. Now, uh, again, you can click on them and go through that, and it's going to give you more information and details on what that is. And it's all good, right? It's going to be doing the, uh, the it's going to be showing you the results based on the assessment. So let me go back to um, authenticated scan on the same host. And as you could see, this is a little bit more detailed. In this case, this was able to collect 58 items categorized as informational instead of the 40-something uh, that we detected before. And it detected, I believe, the same amount of um, medium uh, vulnerabilities, but it also says that we have two uh, higher vulnerabilities in here, right? So if we click here, you're going to see that it detected like one of them is pretty high. Uh, and it is able to do that based on the, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna log into the computer with the credentials and it's gonna do a more through scan of your system. So ideally, uh, when you're running vulnerability assessment, you may want to do a combination of authenticated and unauthenticated, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to be able to see more information if you do authenticate it. But again, most of the time we we'll run these scans as unauthenticated because we would like to see what is visible from the outside, you know, to a potential attacker. But it's good to see what's really happening in your computer and for that, or your systems, I should say, not your computers. And for that, you would like to do a authenticated scan and authenticate to it. But again, make sure that you test the credentials and any security controls on the remote host to uh, ensure that the scan is going to run successfully. Uh, if I go back to this, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you real quick. And this is one of the cool things about Nessus is that uh, when I was running the, uh, the scans, I was just doing the basic network scan, which has a pre-configured set of templates, a pre-configured set of settings, I should say, uh, for what I'm looking for, right? When it comes to the, the discovery, the assessment, all that is pre-configured. But you can also run a credential patch audit uh, template for this. And what this is going to do is that it's not going to necessarily check for vulnerabilities, but it's going to check for uh, the patches that could be missing on your computer or, or the targets, I should say. I keep saying computers, but you can scan for anything. Uh, it's going to check for the uh, for the patches that, you know, you could be missing there. So it is a different way and a different thing that you may want to do uh, as part of your vulnerability assessment solutions and your plan. And let me show you how it looks so I don't go there. So this is the scan on the same host. And as you could see uh, right here, uh, it doesn't show any uh, vulnerabilities categorized as the other ones that we saw before, but it's going to show you a different set of vulnerabilities. And this is going to be based on, 
the information that was provided to Lagim, and it's going to go a little bit deeper into it, right? It's going to show you in this case for SMB detection, uh, it's going to tell you, you know, the SMB is running. What a shocker uh, on a Windows computer. But um, it's going to provide uh, different information, not so much on a potential vulnerabilities, but on the patches for the operating system. So um, that type of scan, as you can see, it is also, uh, let me go back here. It is also a authenticated scan, right? I didn't type this before, but you can run this authenticated and unauthenticated. And again, you can run it on Windows or on your Mac and Linux, or you could use that on SN, uh, SNMP with uh, one of the uh, uh, communities. So um, that is what I wanted to show you for this. I hope that this information is useful as you keep collecting information to grow in the information security field or the network field. And again, if you liked this video, all I'm asking is for you to click on the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a nice comment. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry. There are many good videos out there too that you can watch. So have an amazing rest of the day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.